Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about what a function library is and how you can use it. I want to show you some uh, some practical use cases here and overall get you to understand why these are useful and why I recommend that you use these in your project. Uh, I, I will be making more of these types of random videos about these types of random topics. So the next video will be about macro libraries. Um, but yeah, let's get right to it. So a function library, what can you do with that? Well, as you guys know, typically in uh, video games, let me mute my Discord real quick. So typically in uh, when you make an Unreal Engine game, I mean, um, you got these classes, right? So for instance, a player controller, pretty sure you guys are all familiar with that or a character. Um, and then inside, uh, let's uh, get a player controller here. Inside a class like this, you can make events, right? So you can type custom event and you can obviously write yourself an event like uh, do this and have it do stuff. Um, but certain events you can also collapse or basically make into functions. So if you have some type of logic, you can typically just uh, select that logic right click it and then collapse it to function or macro macro is kind of the same as a function but macro allows for delays to be in there that's kind of the, the real difference there and macros do not contain local variables functions do uh, but yeah the point is you can make functions you can also simply make them by clicking here on the left clicking function giving your function a name and then your function will have functionality that you can reuse so if this were to be a handy function then i can drag it in and use it now you can make your own functions and obviously Unreal engine also has functions pre-made for us so this is one of those examples for uh, <laughs> for example so so this is one of those examples um that our engine has it's like uh, is local player controller and as you can see by that f that's a function now this is also a function but this is a function that i call so i drag it into the scene and i can call it but here's that f for functions um, now what you can do is you can write these functions inside of your classes so let's say inside of my player controller class i can write some functions um but then uh, and then what you could is obviously from your player controller class you could make child blueprints and then you would write some functions in your parent class and then those handy functions you could reuse them in other parent classes um, but there is scenarios there are scenarios where you can have functions that you want to use globally throughout your project and you want to be able to reuse them not only inside of that specific class type such as a player controller or inside of your character but inside all of these classes and for that purpose on our engine has functions libraries um, so they have a cop they have a function library built into the engine here so if you do show engine content uh, you can find here the function library for honor engine and there are some pretty handy stuff in there and most of these functions you already use them uh, they also have pre-made macros uh, some famous ones are a branch so uh, you get a boolean and you go true or false or for each loop um, uh, and, and, and they also have that with functions. But yeah, you can make your own function library as well and write code in there that you can use in your whole project. So the way that you do that is that you, you right click uh, in somewhere inside of your content browser, then you go over to blueprints and you go over to function library. Uh, and when you click that, you can create one, you can give it a name uh, and then you can open it up. And inside of here, you can basically code any type of function and add as many as you want uh, and code that functionality. and uh, then when in whatever blueprint you are, you can then call that function name and call that function. So let me give you some examples of how I use this. So uh, right now I'm inside of uh, my actual game project. This is a game that we are making uh, for Steam. Uh, and inside of this project, I use a bunch of functions. So for example, when I click here on settings, um, I can save a bunch of settings as you guys see. So some audio stuff, for example. And when I save these settings, I don't specifically save them inside of this settings menu uh, no I actually use some functions that I can call from different places as well so functions that are inside of my uh, function library uh, and throughout your game you can obviously have all types of pop-ups as an example so when I press escape here click on exit I get this pop-up here that says are you sure you want to quit the game now obviously you can also imagine different types of pop-ups so if I'm in the settings menu here and click on restore defaults it will show me a pop-up as well uh, but with different information so what i did is that in this scenario you will you you don't want to code basically the pop-up specifically inside of this settings menu and then specifically attached to this exit game button no you you basically want to make it in a modular way as possible uh, so that you can easily reuse your code 
So if we take a look at my function library here for one of the actual, this is like an actual project here, uh, like a real game that we're working on. <laughs> so uh, you see that I have a bunch of functionality in here. Um, so what is a handy one? Well, for example, that create pop-up. So I got my little categories here, so we can go to user widget and then I can have a, I have a function here called create loading screen and create pop-up. And what this does is it has some inputs such as the title of the pop-up, the description, an accept button, whether or not we want to show a decline button, uh, and then the actual decline button text. And then it does some functionality. So it gets the player controller, checks if it's the local version because UI you only want to add locally. And then we add that to the viewport and we give uh, what whoever called this, we give it a reference of this uh, pop-up in this example. And then where can we see this? So where do we see this used? Well, as I said, I can use this anywhere right now. So I could literally go inside of my character class. And if my character begins and we wanted to uh, create the pop-up, I can do that. So off of the begin play here, I can now type create pop-up. And then you see it comes with user widget create pop-up. And here we go. And this function, it says the target is the BFL general and BFL that stands for blueprint function library. Uh, and that's the name that I gave it. So blueprint function library general. And then we have that name create pop-up. So right now inside of the character, I can call this uh, and I can make it say um, hello. And then this is a test. Uh, yes, and I also want to show a decline button, so I put yes, and here I put no. So now if I hit play, then on begin play, my character now uh, spawned this pop-up for us. And then I can click yes or no, and that pop-up has its own separate functionality. But this is just to showcase how handy those functions are. So how do I apply this uh, in, in, in a real scenario? Um, well, as I showed you, I have my settings menu. So if I go over here and then go into my settings menu widget, then we see that if we take a look at the code here real quick, um, we see that uh, once we press this, the restore defaults button, we can take a look at that event. Then you see that I call create a pop-up uh, and that's how I can easily reuse this function here. So yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's it on uh, function libraries and how you can easily use them and apply them in your projects. I hope you guys like that um, and that uh, you can put this to good use in your projects. If you guys enjoyed this video, then uh, please be sure to give it a like and a subscribe that helps out the channel. That way I can make more of these fun videos. Uh, also, please check out our Patreon. Link is in the description. That helps us out a lot. You can also download a cool example project there with a lot of functional code from the multiplayer tutorial series that I'm doing. Um, and lastly, please be sure to check out our Kekdot Marketplace account. So it's Kekdot YouTube. The link is down in the description. We got a bunch of super fun multiplayer games in there. Uh, good prices and a good value for these products. They You, you can really learn a lot from this and I use best practices in them. And like I said, everything here is multiplayer. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one where I explain how you can use macro libraries to your advantage. Bye, guys.